Office Depot. And uh, I'm going to make sure I don't back up and bump into the computer equipment here. We'll show how to put this together. Starting the solder executive desk build, uh, we had to take this apart. Uh, I'm sorry, not take it apart. Unpack it in the parking lot. Bring it up three flights of stairs. The crate for this is simply too heavy. So anyway, they give you a parts identification exploded view on this. This one's going to take a while. Uh, the only tool I'm seeing really needed for this is going to be the power screwdriver, maybe a hand screwdriver. But there's a lot of fasteners, a lot of stuff. Pretty complex item. So we'll get started. So initially, we need to uh, put these little press in fasteners. This is something IKEA doesn't use, but you'll see with um, flat pack furniture from other companies. Kind of a complex little piece. It's made for ho hooking surfaces together. Now this is the back of the furniture piece. One of the things you're going to run into is the matter of the work surfaces that you deal with on these things. You really want to put this together on a carpeted surface and you, you need to make sure that you have room to work. Otherwise uh, it's, it's just going to be a bear to get this stuff done. So. You know, we've got this sitting on a carpet surface, and you really got to be aware of, you know, what could scratch. Because if this stuff scratches, it scratch shows up pretty, pretty clearly in a different color. Uh, one of the ways to deal with that is to keep a few crayons around, uh, lumber, uh, special crayons. You can get them at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and a lot of the arts and crafts stores, crayons in the colors of this, and that's for touching it up. It's an old mover's trick. So we get these on, and what it is is this little thing will spread when I tighten it down, and that's what will run across the back of the desk. But we're going to get a couple more surfaces put on here so that we do a lot of the assembly upside down uh, in order to uh, keep things relatively stable. Uh, unique to this stuff, and interestingly enough, it's all made in Archibald, Ohio. Um, this is not quite the same as the IKEA cam system. You see how there's, there, it doesn't screw on and then you have the, the other cam to go on. Now these look similar, very similar. They function about the same way. But the way this system works is you push this in. Now you have an open side and a closed side. You see how that cam lock works. Very similar to the IKEA thing in that the open part will face the hole. Then this piece goes in and you want to make sure it sinks all the way into where it will actually contact that and you, you leave that. You pre-position all of these because when this gets put onto the surface of the piece that it goes in when you activate that cam it spreads these little plastic things very similar to a drywall anchor. And so this next stage is we're going to be placing these on the edges of a lot of these support pieces because they're what go into a lot of these surfaces so that you don't have screw holes on the other side. The same with this surface here. That way you don't have any risk of screw holes on the other side. Kind of complex, but uh, it's also part of what makes this thing where you're not using a lot of tools for the assembly. I mean, it's a, a power driver and a uh, Leatherman tool, and that's about it. Getting these in the right places is a matter of really keeping an eye on the instructions. And if you are trying to get this thing together without the instructions, you're hosed. Okay, this video is a supplement to the instructions. The next stage is going to involve getting the relatively conventional turn lock bases in these pieces which will serve as reinforcements for the edges of your upright stuff. There's a few where I had to take these back out because that's where a different type of a fastener will end up going. So whether it's this style of fastener or a conventional one, they use the same cam lock. Kind of, kind of interesting on that. Myself going a little bit forward and backward on this. The way the cam locks work, you stick these all over this thing but the way these legs work is you put the legs on one side, um, the A does go upside down in this. So the orientation on the stickers may not mean what you need. But there was a row of three holes along this, which do end up on this surface right here. 
what happens is they've got a special screw with a slightly enlarged kind of cone shaped head see that a little bit different right what it will do is you put those screws in that surface and it interfaces with this slot in this cover piece as you slide it on, it kind of cuts its way to interface into that slot as you slide this on. And once you've slid this on, you then look at the orientation on those legs, right? And you put the other leg in position so that it will face, you see how that, that goes. We line these holes up with these pieces that we put on in the last stage. We line those up and then very gently turn the turn locks. Now I have a power driver here with the power kind of low. And we aren't going to crank that real tight. Just enough to firm everything up. So that's how one leg looks. And yes, the stickers do end up upside down. Yeah, and we are, we're building these sub-assemblies right now. So you may end up having to take some of those out like I did. Once it becomes a little bit more evident where everything goes, but don't be prying these out. If you see a circle that looks like this, it's just a question of whether you're going to be putting one of these in and tightening it later, or whether it's a, a thing that will be tightened on this. They use the same one either way, which is kind of clever. So we're going to make two leg assemblies like that out of all of these pieces. And you'll see that the stickers are, each panel gets one of H and one of I. And this back piece, we've got a longer trim piece that goes down here. It goes on with those same wide headed screws that cut their own dovetail way into this. But it's, it's three of them along the center. What happens on the ends is we've got screws that actually thread into the wood. It'll say use the black wood screws. There's actually black wood screws in a few different lengths. There's also some bronze colored ones in the packaging. Those are what you do not use. You'll use this one, which you'll see is long enough to get in there, but not long enough to pop all the way through. And that's what holds this a little more firm than that other system. The reason they do it this way is so that there's nothing showing on the side. It's a clean appearance on the side that people might see, you know, from the other side of the desk. Next comes the uh, the drawer pull the drawer rails, which come in little packages of pairs. There's a wide one and a narrow one. The narrow ones for the narrower, lighter weight drawers that go on the upper part. The wider one, you'll notice, is a little bit wider for the lower part. Now, what you have to do is you have to get these apart in order to mount them, which is kind of unlike the IKEA situation. There's a little plastic tab here, so you would press that tab in, kind of shake that out, and then that releases this. Now, telling the front from the back on these can be a little tricky, but there, there's only one way the mounting holes are going to line up. So, the mounting holes always bias toward the front on drawer rails. But you'll see a little stopper piece, and then you'll see a relatively open end, but of course it has a stopper piece too. So you really just got to look at the video, look at the pictures in the manual, and kind of see where these holes line up. And because this same drawer hardware I'm sure is used in different types of furniture, we see these holes here. The front one is a circular hole. The rear one is a slightly slotted hole, and that's to make up for any errors or warpage in what they're getting installed in. Because this is new furniture from a warehouse, we're not really having that problem. These are the screws that will be used on this. It's very similar to the little flat screws used on the IKEA stuff. And of course, they're preset into those holes. So you could do a hand screwdriver or a power screwdriver on that. If you use a power tool, don't overdo it. You just want to get it snug. If you really grind into this hard with a power tool, it's just going to break things apart. So the lighter duty one goes on what will be the upper. The heavier duty one goes on what will be the lower. They come apart about the same way, but they are not interchangeable. So make sure that the 
the thicker unit goes on the lower, the thinner unit on the upper. A lot of where you're putting things together upside down. You have what they call the modesty panel or that piece. Um, getting that first corner is really tricky, but what happens is when you turn those little uh, lock fasteners, it'll suck it in just like on the IKEA lock fasteners. Um, so it, it pulls it in and pulls it tight, and as soon as you have an L shape, this thing will hold itself up. Before that, it, it's tricky. So in some cases, you may want this to be a two-person operation, or at least call in a little help. But if you have two people working together on this, they'll probably be getting in each other's way. You also want to do this stage of the assembly with this a little bit offset, so none of those pegs go into the holes yet. Because you still want to be able to slightly flex some of this stuff back and forth in order to get these pieces in. Uh, they use dowels, interesting little metal dowels, so it's a little lock fastener at the front, a little dowel at the back. The finished part is what will face upward. Again, we're doing the assembly upside down. But one of the things you've got to make sure of is, is you have this a little bit offset of where it's going to go so that none of these uh, the other turn locks, none of them make contact where they're eventually going to go because once they go in it's kind of a one-way street. The, uh, if you're missing one or two it's not a bad problem. If you're missing three or four you've got a real problem. But uh, it's basically where we're going to be uh, getting all of this set and square and then very carefully start at one end, kind of work our way to the other and get this settled onto its top before we tighten any of them. Moving and wiggling this around so that these all settle in tight on their spots, okay? Now, if you're not 100% confident in your use of an impact driver or power tool, uh, go ahead and do this with a hand screwdriver, but what, what it is, is once we know we're settled into our spots, we know everything kind of cinched up tight when we were uh, tightening these things down, what we're going to do then is tighten all these little all these little fasteners, all these things, and that's what's going to allow us to, let's say, pick up on the edge of the desk in order to pick up the desk. The other thing is everything has to be very tight and very secure when we go to turn this over. And then when we do turn this over, you have to be careful not to side load the legs with a lot of weight. Uh, so when you go to pick it up to turn it over, you got to be relatively careful with it to get it right side up. If you want to avoid the temptation to use the desk as a work table, it still kind of scratches easily, and this is not scratches, it's just packing stuff. So anyway, we've got the little pull-out keyboard drawer. Uh, you'll go through your other pile of parts. You're going to look for parts that look like these. Uh, we've also got that simpler drawer thing. Wheels go toward the rear because the wheels underneath are toward the front. So. You know, one set of wheels here toward the rear. I want to put those in with common wood screws. Now, the rest of this is going to use wood screws, and then there is a bit of a thing here with your hinge stuff that will be a swing down. So as we get into drawer assemblies, where things get a little trickier, and there were nails in the packages, so we'll we'll see where those come in. But we're going to be working this together. The key drawer, keyboard drawer all done. Uh, the perimeter thing. You're using the longer black screws for that, and of course there's a hinge mechanism, a spring-loaded hinge mechanism here, uh, which makes it kind of a little bit of a complex drawer. Probably the most complex of the drawers on this build, as you have to make sure that everything's kind of even when you put that together, and then of course this one will just set in there. The reason you've got a hole here is so that you can pass the, uh, the cords for the keyboard through if it's not a cord for the keyboard. Things you're going to see in the instruction book is this cross bracing. I've had difficulty deciding whether or not it's even necessary to put it in. A lot of desks don't have it. I, I decided to go ahead and put it in for purposes of the video. It's kind of a complex metal rail setup that is there to prevent the desk from eventually sagging from pressure right here. So, I have, a lot of people leave these out. Uh, I'm going to put it in just to do a, a completeness on a video, but it's, it's not something I recommend as long as you can have, let's say, a little floor brace bracing right here, 
but it depends. Uh, the thing that irritates me about it is that it can kind of block off part of your keyboard drawer if you use one of those taller Microsoft ergonomic keyboards. But as you tighten this down, what it will do is it'll help kind of actually bow this upward so that you can compensate for any additional weight on there. They're mostly a slide and snap together arrangement. And there's a little bit of a left right issue with these. What you'll see in here is double rows. So when we set this up on, let's say, the left side of the desk, as you're looking at it, you would use the, in, the inboard set for the attachment of the front, which is a separate piece. The, the drawer fronts are a separate piece from the other structural front of the drawer. So it, it, it's a box, and then we have an added front. And you would use the inboard screws for, whoops, where are we at? You use the inboard screws for that. And what it is, they're kind of long, right? And so it threads into this. So we set that on there and do that. Now, as far as the body of the drawer goes, it's kind of an interesting no tool snap together arrangement. You see this keyhole cut here. You'll see slots which are consistent with the drawer base, so or the drawer bottom. So you set this like this. You'll see that's all cut and slotted pretty carefully. We lean that back into position, and that's in exactly the wrong spot. So we need to understand that it's going to go this way, and it may seem like it doesn't want to go. So play with it a little bit, and while you're holding that. We'll get the other one, and we'll look at where these slots go. That's the back piece. The sides are going to have that slot on both sides. So that's, they're going to have the, the drawer finish on both sides. That's one way to tell which ones they are. The other is, this always has to end up on the inboard side. We're going to get this, and it goes in. And very carefully, now if you've got to force it, there might be something in there, it might not be in all the way, but you don't want to crack this. It's particle board, it cracks pretty easily. So once we have it like this, we're going to slide that bottom in, but I can't do it too one-handed. The same, we're going to make sure it bottoms out into that slot so that the, it's the slots that hold this. Now this one has a finished and an unfinished side. The finished side goes on the inside of the drawer because that's the part you're likely to see when you open up a drawer and look inside, right? No hammer, no mallet, no tools. We just kind of gently work that dovetail down in there until it bottoms out. Now you'll notice there's a slot here. I'll show you how that goes in a second. Bottomed out, you're like, okay, well those didn't line up, right? Well, that's what these little plastic pieces do. They hook in here, and that's that's how they go. They that's how that bottom's held on back here. And then, of course, we've got a series of holes over here, which are going to correspond to our door rails. Now, we were taking these apart. You'll notice there's a slight difference. The ones where the plastic piece is a little bit further to the rear is what goes on the taller drawers. The other one is what went on the shorter drawers. If you set it like this, you'll notice our holes don't line up at all. So we know that these set up like this, and then suddenly holes line up. See how that goes? So we will use, again, these screws that are associated with drawers. We'll be using these. The larger drawers at the bottom use three, the uppers use two. And we'll, we'll get those put in. Attach, that's how that will look. So we'll just take this. You have to line it up very carefully. Remember, you've got these metal things here. We don't want to scar this up. So again, in removing and putting these drawers in, you've got to be very, very careful to center those on the slot. The very first time in is really tricky. I'm going to set the camera down and make sure I can do that in a way that's not going to damage anything. And there it is. And if it's the last drawer in, you can reach under it around back here to take it forward to attach the front. I suggest not attaching the front until you have it in place. Suspiciously like the beginning of the video. We're all done. About a three hour build on average. Um, gotta look out for a little bit of screw substitution here and there, heavy duty stuff, US made and uh, made in Ohio, that's why 
Ashman made Ohio, and of course here this one was assembled in Portland, Oregon. Anyway, uh, look forward to watching the video, go through forward, backward, do not lose your instructions. This video will not be a subs depot. And uh, I'm going to make sure I don't back up, bump into the computer equipment here. We'll show how to put this together. Starting the solder exactly desk build, uh, we had to take this apart. Uh, I'm sorry, not take it apart, unpack it in the parking lot. Bring it up three flights of stairs. The crate for this is simply too heavy. So anyway, they give you a parts identification exploded view on this. This one's going to take a while. Uh, the only tool I'm seeing really needed for this is going to be the power screwdriver, maybe a hand screwdriver. But there's a lot of fasteners, a lot of stuff. Pretty complex item. So we'll get started. So initially, we need to uh, put these little press-in fasteners. This is something IKEA doesn't use, but you'll see with um, flat-pack furniture from other companies. Kind of a complex little piece that's made for ho hooking surfaces together. Now this is the back of the furniture piece. One of the things you're going to run into is the matter of the work surfaces that you deal with on these things. You really want to put this together on a carpeted surface and you, you need to make sure that you have room to work otherwise uh, it's, it's just going to be a bear to get this stuff done so you know we've got this sitting on a carpet that's surface and you really got to be aware of you know what could scratch because if this stuff scratches it scratch shows up pretty pretty clearly in a different color uh, one of the ways to deal with that is to keep a few crayons around uh, lumber uh, Special crayons, you can get them at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and a lot of the arts and crafts stores, crayons in the colors of this, and that's for touching it up. It's an old mover's trick. So we get these on, and what it is is this little thing will spread when it tightens down, and that's what we'll run 